It is a place, rather than a particular individual or event, that has been called the enduring motif of modern psychology, and that place is the laboratory. After the opening of a demonstration lab by William James in 1875, and an experimental lab in 1885 by G. Stanley Hall, similar laboratories began to open across the country. By 1900, 42 psychology laboratories had been opened. Among all of these laboratories, one stood out from the rest, the psychology laboratory at Wellesley College. It would be the first of its kind to be opened by a woman, the first at a women's college, and the first at a liberal arts college. Wellesley College was founded in 1870 and began receiving students five years later. Built on 300 acres of land, it is located in Massachusetts, roughly 15 miles west of Boston. The main building on campus, College Hall, could accommodate 350 students and faculty. The building also featured lecture rooms, a natural history museum, an art gallery, music rooms, a gymnasium, and laboratories specific to chemistry, physics, botany, and zoology. According to the annual college catalog, to be considered for admission, students were required to be at least 16 years of age and show evidence of good moral character and good health. In the 1880s, Wellesley students paid $75 per year in tuition and $200 for their accommodations. Radical for its time, education was provided to the Wellesley student body by an almost entirely female faculty and staff, including a female president. In 1887, Mary Whitten Calkins joined the Wellesley faculty. She had just recently graduated from Smith College and had spent some time traveling abroad in Europe. Originally hired as an instructor in Greek, Calkins was soon in discussions with Wellesley administrators to provide courses in the new experimental psychology. She arranged to study psychology with William James at nearby Harvard University, though she was prevented from registering as an official student because she was a woman. Calkins completed her coursework, wrote her dissertation, and passed her oral defense only to be refused the doctoral degree. When she returned to Wellesley College, she was appointed an instructor in psychology. Calkins's appointment did not represent the first psychological offerings at Wellesley College. A precursor was mental and moral philosophy, and included courses such as Bible study, logic, philosophy, and ethics. What Calkins did bring with her training at Harvard University, however, was the study of the new psychology that was emerging in Western countries at the end of the 19th century and sweeping the United States, a psychology based in experimentation and laboratory work. In 1891, Mary Whitten Calkins established a psychology laboratory on the fifth story of College Hall. The attic level housed several storage spaces, the Natural History Museum, the Art Gallery, and the Physics Laboratories. Physics, for its part, counted among its facilities a lecture room, a professor's laboratory, and a student laboratory which consisted of eight rooms. The psychology laboratory, meanwhile, began as a single room with $200 worth of equipment. The laboratory featured models of the brain, dissecting instruments, and a small mix of complex and simple psychological apparatus. Psychology laboratories at other universities at the time were built on budgets ranging from $500 to $1,800. Calkins made do with her $200 by having some apparatus constructed locally. But Mary Whitten Calkins would soon pass control of the laboratory to Eleanor McCullough Gamble. Gamble, who joined the Wellesley faculty in 1898, received her doctoral degree at Cornell University under Edward Bradford Titchener. Armed with a strong background in experimental psychology, Gamble was given charge of the laboratory. By this time, Wellesley's psychology laboratory had grown from its single room origins to seven rooms, including a lecture hall and a dark room, and was contributing publications to the discipline's main journals. At 4.30 a.m. in March of 1914, fire broke out at College Hall. The students and faculty awoke to the smell of smoke that was sweeping through the building. Miraculously, not one life was lost in the fire. But when the sun rose that morning, it could be seen that nothing was left of College Hall. With the building was burned the first psychology laboratory opened by a woman. Its history would not end in flames, though, and a new laboratory would soon be built.